In this tutorial, we will learn how to create some fireworks like this, using Blender. So we can start by deleting this default cube. Instead we will add one UV sphere. And we need to reduce its size, so let us change the scale factors to maybe 0.1. Later we will reduce them even further. We can also move it up little bit to the sky, by changing its Z location. Now from the add menu, we'll add one icosphere. We can also use another sphere in this place, but we are using an icosphere, just for the sake of its name, so that we can easily refer to this as the sphere, and this is icosphere. Now select the sphere, and go to the particles tab. Then create a new particle system. This number field controls the number of particles that will emit from the sphere. So let us change this to maybe 500. And we need to make few more changes in the particle settings, because if we run it as it is, we will see that the particles are emitting continuously from the sphere, which does not look like fireworks. We can keep the start frame number as 1, but we will change this end frame number to say 15. And we'll change this lifetime value to 55, so that the sum of these two becomes 70, which is when the particles will disappear. And let us also turn up this random factor to 1, so that the particles get a random lifetime, limited by the highest value as 55. Now, the particles are falling down straight away, but what we want is, they should scatter in all different directions like a mini explosion. So there are two factors that we must consider. Under this velocity, we need to use a positive value in this normal velocity, which is already present. But the gravity is affecting their velocity. We can change the gravity from two places. First in the scene tab, we have got a field called gravity. But if we make a change here, it will affect all other objects in the scene, even the rigid bodies, which is not our goal. So we would like to reduce gravity only for these particles. Let us go back to the particles tab and scroll down. Ensure that the sphere is selected here, then we'll see these fields. And right here, you'll see a section called field weights. Then under this, we can change the gravity. Let us reduce it to 0 0.04. We don't want to make it complete zero, because a little amount of gravity should still work on the particles, which will make them look more realistic. With these changes, if we now run the simulation, we will see an explosion-like behavior which perfectly matches our requirement. But instead of these dummy little balls, we want to place an instance of this icosphere for each of these particles. So, we have to expand another section called Render. Here, in the Render As, we have to select the Object option. And then, in this Object field, we'll select our icosphere. So we get an instance of this icosphere for each of these particles. And the size of these instances is controlled by this scale factor. But before we change this, let us first set up our camera. That is because this size is relative, it depends on their distance from our camera. We have to place our camera somewhere here. So let us remove all the location values for the camera, we'll move it by 25 meters only in the y direction. Our camera will now look at the particles from this angle. Let us also remove these angles, we only need to change the X rotation angle to 90. Now go to the camera view mode. Our camera will capture the scene like this. Let us bring it down a little bit, so that the sphere object is right above the center of the screen. If we now run this, we can see how exactly they appear in the camera view, so we can now decide on their size factor. Let us select the particles, and go to the particles tab. Scroll down to the render section. We will reduce the scale factor to 0 0.015. It may look very small, but it is just perfect because we will set up an emission material for these particles, so they will glow in the dark and look bright even with this size. And for that, we have to set up a material for this icosphere, because the particles are instantiated only from this icosphere. So select it, and turn on the rendered view mode. Then in the materials tab, create a new material. Let us attach an emission shader for this material. In the base color, we can select any color that we like. Then change the emission strength to say 3. So the particles will now get this same emission material. But we don't want to display this icosphere, so let us hide it in the viewport and also in the render. Then go to this world tab. We need to ensure that the background color is very dark, almost like black. And for a better glow effect for these particles, we can also turn on the bloom option from here. But if you are using cycles, you won't see this bloom option there. 
So you can refer to our tutorial where we have discussed how to create bloom effect even in cycles, the link is given below. Let us run the animation and verify. The particles may look very faint, because we are in the viewport. It will look perfect in the render, like what we see now. And we can do one more fine tuning for this. The particles will disappear after frame number 70. That is because, we have set up the particles like this. The sum of these two fields is 70, so the particles will disappear after 70 frames, and it will take place suddenly, but we can make them disappear in a fade-out style. To do that, we have to animate the strength of their emission material. So select the Icosphere, and in the Materials tab, we have to animate its strength value. For this frame number 50, let us insert a keyframe for this value. Then we'll go to frame number 70, and we'll reduce this value to zero, along with a keyframe. Let us run it one more time. We can see that some particles are getting stuck at the middle of the animation. This looks like a bug, but whenever you see an anomaly like this, the problem is often associated with the cache files. In the Particles tab, we can see a section called Cache. Under this, we have an option to delete all the baked data, and then we can bake it again. Once complete, we can verify the result. And this time, there is no abnormal behavior. So if you get any unexpected result with this particle system, remember to delete the old cache and bake it afresh. Now the last thing that remains is, we have to hide this sphere object in the final output. But we cannot hide it completely, because the particles will then also disappear. So instead of that, let's go to the object properties. We will change these scale factors to a very low value, like 0 0.0001. So the sphere will remain invisible, but it won't hide the particles. Now we can render the scene and verify our output. We can then duplicate the system multiple times and get some attractive fireworks like this. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.